Today, I am going to be covering some technology apps that you can use as check-ins, as check for understandings, as ticket out the doors, ways to help your students engage with your lessons and get some feedback for both you and your students. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the technology apps I want to talk to you about is Pear Deck. Now, Pear Deck integrates with your Google Slides. And Pear Deck is great as a way for a check-in. It's great for uh, checks for understanding and tickets out the door. And Pear Deck makes it super simple. You can create your own questions or you can go ahead and use their template library. So. I'm just going to move that over there. You can go ahead and use the template library. So if you go here and the template library, they have questions ready to go for your check-in questions at the beginning of a lesson. They have check for understanding questions during the lesson and your reflections and ticket out the doors that you can use at the end of a lesson. They also have critical thinking questions. They have social emotional learning questions. So you can see how your students are actually doing and feeling. And then they have um, example questions for all content areas, plus specific ones for your small little ones, your math and your science. I love the science ones. The science ones, the, the periodic table is already there for you. And you can just throw a question in and the students can answer, you know, have them circle where hydrogen is, have them circle where the inert gases are, have them circle and identify where the metals or non-metals or metalloids are located. They can draw a picture of an atom. So you can show them this one and they can draw hydrogen, or maybe you want them to draw lithium, or perhaps you want them to draw carbon. And this is a really quick check to see if they understand that Bohr model here. They also have a graph ready to go so that you can do a motion and then they would have to graph it, see what the graph, uh, what that motion would be, or maybe a multiple of motions and then they graph it. So there's lots of different ones, Venn diagrams, cause and effect, your CER template, perfect for your CER where they have the question, they get to write their claim, their evidence and reasoning that will support that claim. So it's perfect for that and lab reports are on here. So again, you can go ahead and use what, what they already have. So this one here, for this one that I have, I did a stress check first um, because we all know that students before the pandemic were getting stressed out. All these tests that we're making them take, the district tests, the state tests, the unit tests, right? That and, the, and telling them over and over again, like they have to get, you know, A's, just to get into college and stuff. And so a lot of the students have been stressed out. And I think the pandemic having to do this has just amplified that. It's amplified all that anxiety, all that stress. The fact that we still during a pandemic have to give district tests and have to do state tests is making the stress level that was already there before having to learn at home and do distance learning and learning during this time it is making it even more pronounced. And so I'm doing a, I did a stress check. You could have them also, you know, come in and explain their learning from the previous day or the homework, you know, this will give you a quick check to see who did the homework, if they understood what they did, right? And then I like to do in the beginning, a little quick review. So you can take their questions. This was a, this was a, um, agree and disagree question. And I just made it add and subtract instead for net force. Then I threw in some net force questions here. And at the end of our quick review, this let me know really quickly, do they understand net force? How do they feel themselves at their understanding? You know, based on them getting the answers right or wrong, where are they at? This lets me know, okay, which students are still struggling a lot and they are completely lost, which ones just need a little extra support and which ones are ready to move on and let's start moving. I also like to use Pear Deck throughout the whole entire class time. So after we do our reviews, 
we then do our little um, activity. And during the activity, we're coming back and we're answering questions of what we're seeing during our activity. And then at the end, I want to know, was that activity challenging? Was it interesting? Was it way too easy? And then, of course, we have our little ticket out the door where they can just quickly write what they felt was the most important thing they learned that day. So Pear Deck is great for the whole entire class time, although you could use it as just a check in or maybe just a ticket out the door, you know, one slide, two slides or to gauge them throughout the whole entire class period and keep them moving and keep them engaged, um, keep them, you know, on task of what they're supposed to be doing. So that's Pear Deck. Another one is Jamboard. Now Jamboard is part of Google. So it's part of your Google apps where you could go to find your Google Slides, your Google Docs, your um, Google Forms. When you go to your drive and you click on the add new, that's where you're gonna find Jamboard. Jamboard is great for students to show you their personalities. So for example, this one I'm having them do, it's find a meme that describes how you're feeling today. By having the students find their own meme, you get to know what they're interested in because they're gonna find a meme that reflects that, whether it is they're interested in Harry Potter or Marvel comics or a certain um, actor or actress or maybe a, uh, a band or a singer, right? They're going to find something similar to that or something that's just going to make them make them laugh, you know, cat memes, dog memes, that kind of thing. So you kind of get to know a little bit about your student's personality with this. You can also have them choose Marvel or DC. And you could put a line here where they have to choose Marvel or DC. Which one would they prefer? Which one do they think that they think is better, right? Then you can have them give their reasonings for why they like the one or the other, right? You can use that then to group the students. If you have activities and you need to get the students in groups, perfect. Put all the marbles together and put all the DCs together. If you're doing Newton's laws, you could have it where they you put, you know, two different sports or maybe even three different sports, and the students have to then, you know, group themselves by the sport they like or would prefer. And then from there, you put all those, let's say, those who like soccer, put them all together. And now they have to explain Newton's three laws for soccer and put all the baseball players together or put all the swimmers together or the tennis players together, however you want to do it. And that's how you can group your students. So Jamboard is great because the students get to make their choices. They can see what everyone else has. They can, you can use this um, Again, for them to practice how to, you know, support their idea that what they like with evidence, you know, what is their reasoning? Why, why do they think it's better? What evidence supports it? So this could be a quick CER practice too. It doesn't have to be science related, but then you have them going in here or your topic related, I should say, but then you have them, you know, you can use it for grouping too. So that's Jamboard. Next we have quiz is now. I like quizzes. I like Kahoot's. They're very similar. I find that if you are going to be using pictures or graphs where, you know, that there's information on it, but it's um, not, it's kind of detailed. I would prefer quiz is because the question is actually on the student's screen so they can see it better. Sometimes I find that if I have graphs, it's harder to see it when that graph is on my screen. So I prefer quiz is, um, and I still play it live with them, but again, the students are going to be moving at their own pace with quiz is. It's still great to do as a check-in. You could just put like three or four questions at the beginning of class, three or four questions based on the previous day's assignment or the homework to see, did they understand it? Where are they at in their understanding? You could also do it halfway through the class period. Let's say that you're working on something. Maybe you're practicing um, problems, math problems, or you are doing an activity on um, chemistry. Whatever it is, halfway through the class period, it's kind of nice to break it up. The students need a little break at that time, right? Especially if you have these block schedules where the students are with you for 60, 75, 80 minutes. Break it up, throw in a three, four question quiz is game. Have them play the game. Did they understand what you just did? 
is their understanding better than it was when they first came in? So you could, you know, check them in the beginning and check them again halfway through. Is their understanding improving? Are they scoring higher? You could also do it at the very end as their ticket out the door. Play this quick quizzes game. This is your ticket out the door. Answer these questions, right? So for quizzes games, yes, you could do them as reviews, you know, before you take a unit quiz or a test or something like that. You could do as as reviews and have like 20 questions, 25 questions for them to go through. But during the class period time, during the class time, quizzes is perfect for just three, four, maybe five questions really quickly, something they can answer within like a few minutes. We want to make this short. So it's like, think about how many questions you could get. The students could answer within like three minutes, take three minutes out of your time. Here's the beginning, something during the middle and something during the end. Kahoot, same thing, same thing. But Kahoot, now everyone's playing at the same time. So students can see where they're at. They can see, you know, exactly how they are. With quizzes, you know, the student could, could sneak up behind them and overtake them. With Kahoot, you know exactly where you are because everyone's answering the questions at the same time. And again, this could be also quick. Think about three or four questions, something you can play, a little Kahoot, for the first three minutes and then halfway through the class period and then again at the end. Really quick, check for understanding questions. The students will love it because they're going to compete against each other, which they like to do, right? It's gonna give them feedback on what they know and you feedback also on what you know. So quiz is a Kahoot, very similar. It all depends if you wanna play it where the students are answering the questions at the same time. And it also depends on if your questions um, require pictures. And again, if you're going to require a picture for them to look at something and it's kind of detailed, like a graph, I would play quiz is where the picture is going to be on their screen. My fifth one is formative. It was formally go formative. Now it's just formative. Formative is great if you need the students to draw something or shade something in or color something. So formative is great for that. With formative, you can create questions that require the students to mark on it. It's also great for them if you want them to show their work because they have to actually do the calculations on the question there. So for example, with this one here, um, I had a periodic table and they had a color, the six semi-metals green. So I could look at this and I can quickly see, do my students understand where the semi-metals or metalloids are located? You could also have that exact same picture and just now say color in the inert gases or color in the metals or color in the alkaline earth metals. So you can be specific. You could have a blank atom and have them, you know, draw the Bohr model for lithium or the Bohr model for nitrogen or for aluminum right? You're going to quickly see that they understand where the protons are, where the electrons are, where the neutrons are, and how many they have in each atom and how to draw it. Like you'll be able to see that really quick. So make again, this one short, a few questions. I mean, this, you could use this as your actual unit quiz. This is, this is a perfect site. A lot of my coworkers use this to create their unit quizzes and their unit tests. But you could also use it for a quick check-in at the beginning of class period, at the end, maybe even halfway through. Again, put two questions on there, um, two things that you want them to draw on, create. You can even do multiple choices. So it does multiple choice. It does true and false. It does short answer. So it does a lot of things. I just really like it for the drawing capabilities there. So that's go formative. So that's my five. Pear Deck, Jamboard, quizzes, Kahoot, and formative. Now, all of these are great because they all do integrate with Google Classroom, and that's why they're so nice. They integrate with Google Classroom, all of them do, so you can sync right to it. My bonus for you, and this is one that most people don't know about, so if you know about it, awesome, um, it's Socrative. So Socrative, is great for a very quick check. Let's say that you're in the middle of um, doing an activity and you wanna know really quickly, do they understand? Uh, do they, you know, you do a thumbs up, thumbs down, you could do a, you know, hold your fingers up or you could get them on here 
write the question out really quickly, a quick multiple choice, true and false, short answer, and they answer it within one minute. Within one minute, you could have the students on Socrative answering this question and you can see exactly where they're at in their understanding. So Socrative is, is nice and quick. You could set it up ahead of time with quiz. You can do a space race for it. You can do it as an exercise. So you could set it up ahead of time if you wanted to. Or again, it's perfect for that quick question. You just want to know where are you at? Do you understand it? You could do the true and false and say, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, ready to go, not ready to go and change that instead, you know, just two choices. But again, this Socrative is a nice, quick way to check their understanding and engage the students. It gives them a little break on what they're doing, a little break, a brain break to, oh, moving on to another task. Because, you know, students need to have those breaks, 10, 15 minutes. They need to do something else. They need a little break. So again, all of these, all six of these are great for those quick breaks that you need, that students need to, again, reinforce what they're learning, do a quick check-in, do a quick ticket out the door, exit ticket, whatever you want to call it, a way to end and wrap up your session. So those are my um, tips for using technology to help engage your students in the classroom. Have a great day. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.